Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to get started allowing users to upload new wallpapers from our admin dashboard. In the previous video I mentioned how up until a point you can get away with using like a MySQL GUI, whether that's PHP My Admin or SQL Pro or something like that, to entirely avoid having to code up an admin panel. If it's just you working on the project, the same can sort of be said for having a file upload process that you can do from the website itself. Like you might be okay with just uploading files files manually using FTP or rsync or something like that but almost inevitably sooner or later you're going to want to do it from the back end and you're going to want the process to be a little bit nicer than that. So given the fact that we're using the Easy Admin Bundle and that this is quite a common problem it comes as no surprise that there is already an integration with an existing bundle to help you with uploads. So if you're that way inclined then do look at the Vich Uploader Bundle integration and the truth is that bundle and the integration is going to be a lot more robust than what we're about to build but in my opinion it makes more sense to use that bundle if you know the process that's going on underneath without using that bundle as inevitably if you add something like this to your website it's going to become quite heavily used and that means bugs are going to get noticed and if those bugs fall on you to fix then that process is a lot easier if you know how the code all works we know that we need to allow our users to enter a new wallpaper and so if we try and do that now you can see that we're expecting the user to provide the file name the slug, the width and the height and the category. So a lot of this information is stuff that we can figure out dynamically. As we saw when we created our console command, we can use built-in PHP functions to determine the width and the height. We could guess at the slug based on the file name. And really we don't want to capture the file name anyway. We want to allow the user to click a button here and upload the file from the front end. So let's start by making some changes to enable this. So back inside our project, I'm gonna go in app, config, and then our config directory into our easy admin bundle configuration. And I'm going to create a new key at the same level as list, which has the name of form. And then we need to specify which fields are on that form. So in our case, we'll have the slug, the width, and the height. And again, that's Command D on a Mac, Control D on Windows to duplicate that line. So if we save that, refresh our form, you can see that we've removed some of those fields. And if we enter any old junk in here, try and save that off you can see that it won't allow us to save because the file name is null and it's not allowed to be null. But as we've just seen, we don't want to capture the file name directly. We want to capture that from a file, an uploaded file. So if we're capturing an uploaded file, we need to add that as a concept onto our entity. So we need to jump into source, app bundle, entities, and then into our wallpaper entity. And just at the top here, immediately under category, I'm gonna add in a new one for a private class property of file and that is going to be a string, it's going to be the file name. And we'll also add in the ORM column, the name of file, and a type of string. The only other thing that I want to do at this stage is add in a getter and a setter for file. So I'm going to do that now, adding in the new getter and setter just above the getter and setter for file name. I just like to keep it structured in the same way that my class properties are. With that change made to my wallpaper entity, I'm going to generate a new doctrine migration by using the doctrine migrations diff command. So that's gone ahead and created me a new migration containing the change that we've just made to our wallpaper entity. And I'm just going to up arrow there and do a doctrine migrations migrate. Don't need to put in the full command there. And we can see that's gone through. I was clear off that. And then if we jump back into here, I can get rid of that. Pretty sure I can get rid of that for the moment. And under our form fields now, I'm going to use another one of these built in property types from Easy Admin Bundle. So our property is going to be that file, it's going to have the type of file. That's going to make sure that we get the right input on our generated form. And we'll just leave it at that for the moment. Refresh our form. And that looks good enough. If we needed to, we could come back in here and change the label. But as it is, it's already got the correct label for us. And at this point, it's really easy to feel confused about what's going to happen. So when we post in this form, it's going to contain an image file. It can contain any kind of file, but in this case, it's going to be an image file. That image is going to get uploaded to our server. At the time that image is uploaded, PHP will store it in a temporary location. As the name implies, the location it's stored is only temporary. We must move it to somewhere that we control. In our case, we want to put it into our web images directory. Because we'll be working with a file, we will be able to determine things like the width and the height, and potentially even the slug. 
Taking guidance from the cookbook article as referenced in the write up to this video, we're going to use a doctrine life cycle event to hook in to the process just before the new wallpaper entity is saved off to the database or persisted to add this information to our entity and then save it. Likewise, we're going to do something very similar when we come to edit an existing wallpaper. And because it's quite involved and a little bit fiddly, it makes sense at this point to introduce testing. And for our testing, we're going to use PHP spec. So I'm going to jump across to the command line, do a composer, require, dash dash dev, php spec, php spec. I'm just going to let it do its thing. And whilst I appreciate this is a beginner's series, it's really never too early to start testing. Definitely will make your code more robust. And in my opinion, it will make you a better developer too. Anyway, we'll jump back into our project. Composer JSON has been updated with our php spec dependency and the associated change has been written to composer lock. There is one other thing that we need to do inside our composer JSON, which is directly from the PHP spec documentation, which I'll link to in the show notes. We just need to make sure that we've got the auto load settings in for PSI zero. And in fact, I can just copy paste those ones. We should be good. That's all we need to do for PHP spec to get started. 